Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to look into logging in .NET Core. First of all, what is logging and why do we need it? Imagine you have a robot that can perform different tasks. Let's say you want the robot to clean your room, water the plants and feed your pet. You give the robot a set of instructions on what to do and it starts doing those tasks. Now imagine you want to know if the robot is doing everything okay or if it's encountering any problems along the way. So you ask the robot to write down that what it's doing in a notebook. Every time robot starts or finishes a task, it writes a message in a notebook. For example, if a robot starts cleaning your room, it writes started cleaning the room in the notebook. If it encounters an obstacle like a chair in a way, it writes encountered an obstacle chair. And when it's done cleaning, it writes finished cleaning the room. By looking at the robot's notebook, you can see exactly what it did and when it did it. If the robot didn't water the plants, you can check the notebook to see if it encountered any problem or if there is an error that caused it to skip that task. So logging works similarly. We add instruction in our program to write down important events like when a function is start or finishes. If there is an error or if the program reaches to a certain point, these messages helps us to understand what's happening inside the program and troubleshoots any issue that arise. So logging is like having a robot that write down what it's doing in a notebook so we can keep track of its actions and figure out what's going on if something doesn't work as expected. .NET Core comes with an inbuilt logging mechanism and this interface is called iLogger but it has some limitations like it cannot log into files or database or email so you need some different kind of libraries some additional libraries for that. We have lots of logging libraries like nlog, serilog, log4net. You can pick any one that suits you best. But it is good to have knowledge of multiple libraries. It gives you multiple options to choose. So now you have multiple tools in your toolbox. I already have covered serilog in this channel and Today we are going to look into another library that is nlog. I personally found nlog easy to integrate and nlog documentation is great. You can easily integrate it just by looking into documentation but that doesn't mean serilog is not good. Serilog have its own advantages and I also found serilog a great library. So I'm not comparing these two. So the basic idea is integrate nlog and override iLogger with nlog functionality. So let's get started. First of all, we need a .NET Core project. I have an existing project because I want to save some time here. I'm using .NET Core Web API project and .NET 7 framework. So create a .NET Web API project if you don't have any existing Web API project. So if you have any existing project or uh, some kind of uh, dummy project, you can use it for the logging purpose. Now we need to install a package from NuGet. Right click on the API project, go to manage NuGet package, go to the browse tab and search nlog.web.asp.net core. Sorry, nlog.web.asp.net core. Click on install and let's wait and it's done. Now we need to add a configuration file for nlog. You can easily find that file in the source code and link of the source code is available in the description box. So go and copy the code from here because it's not easy for anyone to remember these codes. So create a file here nlog.config and one thing you need to notice here everything should be in lower case. Remove the boilerplate code from here because it have a boilerplate code for C class. So remove it from here and now paste the config file here. 
let's look into this tag and log it is a core tag here and the attribute internal log file is a location of internal logs for and log so it is basically for log file for and log because we are using a extension of and log for ASP.NET Core so that is defined here now we have this section targets we are defining all the targets where you want to store logs you can have multiple targets like file and console for example you want to log basic things to consoles all logs in a separate file and important logs in a different separate file so it is possible to do in a and log so here our first target is the type of file we define it with xsi colon type equals to file in a name attribute we define the name of this target i am naming it to all file in a file name attribute we give file path with file name our file name will be web api dash all plus sort rate dot log we have one more attribute here and that is layout and here we define the format of data we are logging some basic info here like long date for logging time event id log of error logger message and exception we are adding another target here and that is also a file type i am naming it own file dash web this file targets for own log messages with some extra web details like request url and action add another target here it is a type of console and i'm going to name it lifetime console name attribute is identifier of a target console targets for hosting lifetime messages to improve docker or visual studio startup detection now we have another section here and that is a rule section we choose appropriate log target for a specific kind of log so this line logger name equals to asterisk min label equals to trace write to all file and it suggests you are logging everything into all file and all file is a name of target we have defined earlier microsoft.hosting.lifetime will be stored in lifetime console and own file web skip non critical logs with these two lines other logs with label trace will be stored in own file web now open the program.cs file and add these two namespaces here var logger equals to log manager dot setup dot load configuration from app settings dot get current class logger with this line we are setting up logger here let's add some message with logger.debug so that we can check it is working fine or not now we need to set up and log for dependency injection we are going to inject microsoft's inbuilt high logger into our classes so add this line builder.logging.clear providers and builder.host.use and log put all of these code in a try block so add a try here and close it here add a catch block and inside the catch block use this line logger dot error to log the exception message to the logger now we need to define a finally block here so define a finally block here and inside it write and log dot log manager dot shutdown it will properly dispose the logger open a controller where you want to integrate logger or a create a new one create a private read only field i logger book controller underscore logger now press control plus dot sign or period symbol and select add parameters to book controller it will add these lines to the constructor and in the constructor we will write logger dot log debug and log is integrated to book controller so that we can check it is integrated to book controller now i have a post method with name create here i have deliberately created a divide by zero error here inside a catch block i will write logger dot log error and in the brackets 
or in the parenthesis we will write ex dot message it will log the exception in appropriate location now run the project I hit this endpoint go into a location where is your log files I have defined temp folder in the C drive now we have three files here this file is internal log file for and log and this one is all log file it contains every log entry the last one is the own file and every log we have put in the project will be stored here and here we have if we open this file here we have init main and log is integrated to book controller and entry of divide by zero exception so it have all the things logged which we have defined in our project all of these things are displaying in a format that we have defined in the unlog.config file we can also change this format let's display these entries in a json format let's delete all of these files now go to the unlog.config file and let's change the layout of this own file so remove layout from here put a closing tag of target here inside the target we will put a layout tag and xsi colon type equals to json layout so our layout will be json and it means we are going to store this log file in a json format inside it we will have a tag name attribute define all the attributes you want in your log or log file so first one will be the time and it is its layout long time so time will be displayed in a long time format another attribute will be event and we will display event id here next one is level then logger then message then exception then url and the last one is action these are the attributes we will display in the log entry let's run this project hit the endpoint all file will be the same as previous one because we did not change its layout now open the own file and our layout is changed to json format here we have this debug message and log is integrated to book controller and exception message attempted to divide by zero and this error is happened in a url api slash books and in action called create in this way you can log any information you need to log and i hope you enjoyed this video i have tried to explain every term here but if you have any doubts feel free to ask in a comments link of the source code is available in the description so check that out if you need it so if you find this video helpful then show some love and hit the like button that's it for now see you next time